Hey, welcome back, everybody. Happy Wednesday. If you can have a happy Wednesday, I'm missing your teachers as much as you do. I know you do. Don't lie. All right, here we go. We're going to go over the rest of the answers. If I could zoom out and get the whole page in there so you can see a little bit better. And uh, hopefully uh, you were able to get them all yesterday. I do have a little bit more writing on here than last time you saw this because I had a kid do exactly what she was supposed to. Right? She started the homework early, and then she ran into some trouble with that first problem. So she came to me in my afternoon Zoom, uh, like she was supposed to, and she asked me for some help on that problem. So we went over it. So she was able to get this done and get her help and go back and finish and have everything be on time. Right? That's what you should do. Remember, uh, it's hard. To ask your teacher for help because you don't have a whole lot of experience for that because coming from Brooks or fifth grade at another school, uh, that was probably, uh, you know, your, your teacher had 25 kids and they could sense when someone was struggling and in-person learning is a little bit easier too. Now, especially with distance learning and uh, teachers having more than one class, it becomes more and more difficult. So it becomes more and more important for you to speak up, okay? as you become a mature student, so to speak. So here we are, five four. We've got this diagram and Josephine was supposed to paint that much of the picture. About how much is that? It looks to be about one fourth. So you can see how I just sort of drew some lines there and that looks like about one fourth. <clears throat> what she actually painted was this amount and that looked to be, I just sort of did that first so you can see that's about half of what she was supposed to do. Okay. So she was supposed to paint about one fourth of the mural. She painted about half of what she was supposed to. And that's not half of the whole thing, half of what she was supposed to. So it's real important to read those questions carefully and then show your question in your answer or write the question and the answer. Right. As you write it, it uh, really solidifies your understanding that you, you you know what the question is actually asking. And the last part is they want you to write a product to show what portion. Well, she painted one half of one fourth. What does of mean in math again? It means times one half of one fourth. And you could see what that ends up being. Half of a fourth is one eighth. OK. Now. Remember, I drew that picture yesterday and sort of went into that. So we had to move our equal sign over a little bit. But there was plenty of room. Okay, 5-5, <clears throat> draw a rectangle. And I drew the rectangle with a width of 8 and a height of 6. And then uh, we wanted to, <coughs> excuse me, enlarge it. Uh, so it's 16 inches or 16 units wide and 12 units, right? And that's what it's going to look like. Uh, what is the ratio of that? Well, it, it's 16, it was 8. It was 16 to 8. It, this 12 high was 6. It's 12 to 6. Remember the other ways of writing ratios? You could write it with a colon, and you say it the same way. All right, 12 to 6, 16 to 8. And the third way is the first number over the second number. And you can see both of these. Once you do that, then you can simplify this. And the ratio ends up being two to one. So the factor I increased it by, once you get that one on the bottom, is I increased it by a factor of two, is how they say that. Okay? The, the ratio is two to one. Every one in the original became two. So this one became two. This one became two more. This one became two more, and so on, right? Okay? All right. <clears throat> if you wanted to reduce. Okay, and I think I read that wrong uh, yesterday. Reduce, I'm going to make it smaller, the 8 by 6, by a ratio of 1 to 4. Okay, so I want to reduce, I'm going to underline that because I'm going to make it smaller, ratio of 1 to 4. Okay, so that means every 4 in my original now becomes a 1. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, that becomes a 1 here. Right? One, two, three, four. That becomes a one here. One, two, three, four. That becomes a one. But this is two. So what does that become? What do you think? If you said one half, 
That's right. Two is half of four, right? So <clears throat> my next picture, instead of eight wide and two, it's going to be two wide and one and a half tall. Now, how do you do the math on that? Instead of sort of doing it in our head and talking about it, well, if my ratio is one to four, that is one to four. I go to one to four uh, is how much to eight? Well, what did I do to the four to make it right? Right. I I uh, I times it by two, so I did it two. So now this eight becomes a two. And one to four is how much to six? This is tricky, right? Okay, because one fourth of six is one and a half. Okay. All right. Uh, one fourth. That what's another way of doing that? Um, yeah, that's that's the the best way I could come up with right now. Okay. Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you. 5-6 we did on the back, and they wanted you to come out with the absolute value of negative 3 <clears throat> plus absolute value of 14 equals uh, 17. So that line segment is 17. On B, they said, how about negative 9 and 1 and negative 9 and 11? Negative 9 and 1 is here. Negative 9 and 11 is here. What's the difference between <clears throat> 11 and 1? That's going to be 10. Okay, so on that one, you're saying the absolute value of 11 minus the absolute value of 1 <clears throat> equals 10. Okay, next one's you're used to doing these C method to turn this mixed number into an improper fraction. You go 5 times 4 is 20, plus 4 is 24. What's it go over? The same thing as what you started with. Now, why are we doing that? Because each of these four whole pizzas is five-fifths. So five-fifths, 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 five-fifths. That's four times five, 20, plus this four for the partial, right? Same thing here. Each of these four holes is 15 fifteenths. So I go 15 times four is 60, 60 plus 13. And what's it go over? Same thing as what I started with. So this is 73 fifteenths. Okay, now doing the opposite, changing an improper fraction to a mixed number, you divide the bottom into the top. Now, seven goes into 14 two times. Two times seven is 14. My remainder goes on top. What was on the bottom goes on the bottom. Two and three sevenths. Now, you want to double check that? Go use the C method. Seven times four is 14, plus two is 17. What's it go over? What I started with. Okay, all right. 3 into 6 goes twice, 3 into 8 goes twice, my remainder is going to go on top, what was on the bottom when I started goes on the bottom, you want to double check it, C method, 3 times 22 is 66, plus 2 more is 68, over what, what I started with, boom, okay, hopefully those are getting easy for you, uh, here we go, 5, 8, uh, five, eight, three fifths plus. Okay, so I re rewrote it vertically like I should and showed you that we're changing these to 20 -ths. Here I did five times what is 20? Five times four. I don't put a four there. Three times four. Three fifths is 12 20 -ths. Here I did four times what? Now I don't admit, I don't automatically put a five up there. I tell myself and I say one times five is five. Right? I know that might seem silly, but it's establishing the habit, so I always do it, so I don't forget. All of a sudden, put a 4 there. Okay, 12 and 5 is 17, so I have 17 twentieths. Now, I'm going to change these to what? Hopefully, you said twelfths. Here, I did 3 times 4, so i got to go 2 times 4. Here, I did 4 times 3, so I have to go 3 times 3. 9 twelfths minus 8 twelfths is 1 little twelve. All right, <clears throat> five and one half is the same as five and two times three, one times three, three six. Four and one third is the same as four and three times two, one times two. Okay, so 
three six plus two six is five six and five and four is nine okay again i'm starting to show you how to put a big box around your problem little box around your answer it's a great way to organize now we get to this one and we think oh yes Ch ching cowbell <laughs> easy problem right why is it easy multiplying practice is easy straight across the top seven times five straight across the bottom eight times six simplify if you can in this case i can't i'm done boom i'm out of here all right hopefully you did well